Greetings everybody. Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a meteorite. And is it a new class and does it have the building blocks for life? This will be in my sciences section. I have a playlist if anybody's interested you can check them out on my homepage at YouTube. And as usual, when I do articles like this, I read them word for word, maybe inject my own two cents here and there. But I'll put the link to the description, link in the description for the article I'm reading. And these are things that fascinate me. I always get uh, excited. You know, I'm the science nerd and all this, you know, new stuff that's happening is great. Like there's a article I was going to do about um, them putting dinosaur legs on a chicken, like a baby chicken embryo or something and it worked i was gonna do that one but i figured i'd do this one the title for this is uk meteorite that fell to earth contains building blocks for life this is on the iflscience.com site it's by stephen luntz like i said i'll put the link for this in the description i usually read it word for word and then you know Depends on how stoned I am, I'll, I'll, I'll talk and put my own two cents in. Uh, again, a lot of these articles I read have highlighted underlined words here and there, and that'll lead you to more information, perhaps uh, the study they did in the abstract and stuff like that. And you can get pretty deep into this, but I'll read this article and then um, talk about it a little bit quickly. Now, the uh, picture here they show is a woman holding a picture, you know, holding um, a piece of the media, right? And I'll start now. The importance of the UK's first meteorite in 30 years, collected after being seen falling, has been confirmed with the discovery of amino acids, organic compounds essential for life on Earth. The concentration of amino acids and polysilic aromatic hydrocarbons <laughs> PAH is oh good it'll be uh it'll be you know signified by PAH Whew, I'm already starting to fucking four lines in uh PAH is, is not as high as in some other asteroid remnants just 1.1 and 6.2 parts per million respectively but that might make the discovery even more interesting the Wichicomb, which, the Winchcomb meteorite not only contains organic materials, but also appears to represent a new class of meteorites. A new paper reports. Some of the materials in it were altered in ways that suggest at least three short outbursts of liquid water on the asteroid body for which it came. Meteorites don't make it to the ground without creating a spectacular sky show at least at night. Thanks to the rise of personal cameras and fireball tracking networks, we are now increasingly able to determine objects, flight paths, using this to calculate the orbits of asteroids where meteorites come from. Uh, yeah, now this is why it's more evidence that UFOs visiting Earth is bullshit, but I'll leave that for, you know, a, a discussion with Demi in the future. When a meteorite's composition and its former orbit can be matched together, it greatly enhances the potential contribution to understanding solar system evolution. Detail from the UK Fireball Network made Winchcomb one of the first 40 meteorites whose origins within the asteroid belt could be traced. Almost immediately, it was clear this was an important find. Within two weeks, the likely presence of water-bearing minerals was reported. As a carbonaceous chondrite, which makes up only 4% of meteorites and may have seeded life on Earth, Winchcomb stood out. Quote, Studying the organic inventory of the Winchcomb meteorite provided us with a window into the past. How simple chemistry kickstarted the origin of life at the birth of our solar system said Dr. Queenie Chan of the Royal Holloway University of London in a statement. Discovering these life's precursor organic molecules allowed us to comprehend the fall of similar material to the surface of the Earth prior to the emergence of life 
on our own planet. The fact the first four surviving pieces was collected within, 20, uh, within 12 hours of landing, allowing little time for contamination, added to the meteorite's value. Indeed, because the abundance of organic material in the meteorite was 10 times lower than in other carbonaceous chondrites. They may not have been distinguishable from earthly contamination had it not been retrieved so quickly. As it is, some of the amino acids found are quite rare on Earth, confirming their extraterrestrial origins. Now you see how fast we would find media, uh, UFOs coming and they fly past? It's fucking nonsense. But anyway, here we go. I'll continue. The Winchcomb stones had a number of features never previously seen in meteorites, including low amino acid abundance for a carbonaceous chondite. <laughs> the fuck am I saying? C-H-O-N-D-R Chondrite. But usual ratios among the amino acids and PAHs, oh god, thank you, that are present. Combined with the incomplete conversion of Winchcomb's components into solid rock, this led the authors to speculate Winchcomb could represent a new class of meteorite that has not been studied before. Perhaps in part because of its weak structure, very little of the Winchcomb meteorite made it to the ground. Just 600 grams, 1.3 pounds, have been recovered, compared to a 27 kilogram, 60 pound carbonaceous trondite that landed in Costa Rica in 2019. This prevented certain forms of analysis that require bulk samples. As with most asteroids, it is thought Winchcomb was originally part of a large asteroid, and the piece that hit the Earth's atmosphere was knocked off in a collision before wandering space for a long time. Wow, see, now, this is, just fascinates me. You know, we get more evidence, and it's a lot of, um, you know, what do you call them, theoretical scientists and stuff that are like, making a name and really just, um, you know, milking the numbers game and the, you know, logical fallacy shit, and I, I tend to agree in, on one end of, look, I think we could have so much evidence of UFOs and stuff, and the fact that this meteorite is found, tracked, you know, retrieved within 12 hours to avoid contamination, it lends more to that, um, you know, idea that this is a amazing breakthrough in a sense that if we can keep doing things like this and find them quick enough, we could have origins for life on Earth. And you know what? Fuck religion and stuff. You you could just say fucking God did it, right? You know, God moved the you know, whatever God you worship, it moved the meteorite, whatever. But I love facts and I love the evidence. So I don't need to look at an old book to tell me some fucking nonsense. This is interesting. It could be the start of a you know, new classification of meteorites. And we could have answers like, you know, why, why don't we find more signs of life in the universe? Like these, I did a podcast series on, um, what did I call this? I don't even know what I called the series, but it's a small playlist of like four or five theories of, you know, the, the you know, fucking Drake's equation and the paradoxes of answers of why we're not seeing abundance of life in the universe. Not that we have such far-reaching scopes and uh, detection technology, even though that's improving also with the new uh, um, telescopes and cameras we have out there. We're seeing some amazing stuff. And I just find it um, interesting that so many theories are wrapped around, well, okay, if, if Earth didn't you know, support life at one time, what could have been the catalyst and this could be uh one of the pieces of evidence that fits in the puzzle meteorites hitting the earth from other planets and pieces of asteroids that had different combinations of elements and there you go when you combine that with the state of the earth and what phases it was in it's look i'm a schmuck from brooklyn new york and Although I'm a nerd and it fascinates me to no end, these type of articles and this, you know, 
seeing these things come up on my feeds or actually looking for them in the times where I'm just in the mood, I, I, I just can see, you know, how far in the future will be when we have solid answers. And look, it even says, by the way, the article actually has the link at the end to the actual abstract. Which is, I think, is always important when you try to verify things, because, like I said, you've got people with PhDs, theoretical scientists, and they've been milking the string thing, string theory, and all these things, and I, I really miss some of the hardcore uh, scientists that are just doing tests in these labs. You get a meteorite, boom, boom, you do tests on it. Now, can we go the other way and say, well, how much stuff are they not telling us? What if they found a piece of an alien ship or whatever? Well, fine. But here we're talking about the fact that a meteorite crashed in 2021, was retrieved within 12 hours. They saw signs of things were actually different. And what could this be a new class of meteorite? And they just didn't have enough, which they admit, to do bulk testing. But even that, it's, it's the building of evidence and facts that lead and start pointing an arrow in one direction. I once had a conversation with somebody, and this was the days where I was, you know, just arguing for arguing sake sometimes, but you have all these arrows, and you're seeing the evidence build up, but you still don't take it as 100%. I think that's one of the things science is um, really good at. It could be better, you know, we have our bullshit, you know, I'm, I'm glad that people try to put these fake articles through peer review and they get caught and stuff and what goes through and whatnot so nothing's perfect i get it but you build up this evidence and you start filling in the gaps and you know it makes a picture clearer and maybe uh life did start on earth from its own organisms or something but there are a lot of things that you know you read and they they tell you why maybe it couldn't have or what was present in the earth what was that temperature like and atmosphere like and pools of bubbling you know whatever and you know acid rain like fucking fire rain and whatever the fuck is going on and we have evidence that a meteorite can crash the earth and have building blocks for the you know amino acids i think that is amazing now this is probably not something new i just get real geeked out when they see these articles they catch me but like i said i do have a somewhat of a system where i try to verify certain things like i'll hit these links and if you hit these links and they start bringing you to dead things i tend not to do the article on them i, I don't think i've ever done one then thinking about it like that so i want to make sure these things lead to things that have solid you know uh you know uh one of the things i hit here was the um that it mentioned the fireball thing uh so what they did was okay so i'll I'll do this real quick so in in the article i was reading it talks about thanks to the rise of personal cameras and fireball tracking networks so if you hit the link for fireball tracking networks it leads you to another article that says for the first time a fresh meteorite's exact location has been found using a drone again there's a picture here and it shows the guy which is blew my mind for the first time a combination of sky watching cameras and drones has been used to find a meteorite opening up a new era in our access to information about the solar system we spend billions of dollars to send spacecraft to asteroids to bring back pieces to analyze but sometimes those pieces make things easier coming to us instead of in the form of meteorites unfortunately most of the space rocks space rocks available to study have spent long enough on the ground they're not in quite the pristine state we would like or being contaminated or whatever i'll continue planetary scientists have set up networks of cameras to track the paths of incoming objects in the hopes of finding meteorites more quickly last year they took this to a new level by enlisting drones the success in pinpointing the location and finding the meteorite in the australian outback has been announced in a preprint paper under peer review by the astrophysical journal letters to find a small rock in a rather large desert required not only path mapping drone technology and persistence but also machine learning to train the drones in what they were looking for this is 
just I, I love this shit. Just four days after the Desert Fireball Network Observatory first captured the bright fireball entering the Earth's atmosphere, scientists found a 70 gram meteorite Western Nola Bar on the Lintos paddock of Kaibo Station in Western Australia, just 15 meters from the calculated path. Some meteorites are so common, their value is fairly low, but rare varieties are truly precious to science. One unusual specimen discovered in Merchants in Victoria in Australia in 1969 provided so much insight into the solar system, it had an entire book written about it, as well as sparking numerous papers and a local tourism industry. The value is enhanced when we have a good idea of the rock's path through the atmosphere, enabling us to map its previous orbit and sometimes match it to the asteroid it was once part of. The Desert Fireball Network was established to both increase the chance of recovering meteorites and to provide multiple images of their flight. It takes advantage of the vast areas of Australia free from artificial light that would disrupt the images and few plants to hinder the search for sky rocks once they land. On April 1st last year, the DFN recorded a bright meteor that was no April Fool's joke. Kirtland... University graduate student Seamus Anderson and co-authors observed the light was bright enough to make it likely that part of the incoming rock would make it to the ground and used the camera images to map out a search zone, 5 point square kilometers, 2.0 square miles, in the size of the vast Nullbar Plain in Western Australia. A camera-fitted drone flies over and collects, and collects images of the fall zone, which are Transfer to our field computer, where an algorithm scans each image for meteorites and features that resemble them. Anderson explained in a statement, Although our algorithm was trained on data collected from past meteorite searches, we brought with us previously recovered meteorites and images them on the ground at the fall site to create local data to which further train the algorithm. The work required about 10% of the labor usually involved in a meteorite search an important saving when searching for rocks in a remote location under the burning Australian sun. The process was not entirely smooth, though. Since the paper notes, we have encountered false positives such as tin cans, bottles, snakes, kangaroos, and piles of bones from multiple animals. Anderson told IFL Science this was the eighth meteorite recovered by the DFN, but the first using drones. Preliminary analysis suggests it is a H. Chondrite, a fairly common meteorite type, but even this was confirmed, the network should clear the way to finding rarer versions. Anderson told AFL Science, the likelihood of anything making it to the ground is calculated based on the brightness of the flash and the lowest images returned. In this case, it suggested there was probably something there, but it would likely be a small side. Okay, so what I, what I meant to get to here is this is double nerd for me. So um, we, I see the article about the media, right? And within it, you find the underlying, uh, you know, words, and it leads you to the Fireball Tracking Network. And here we go again. We have different people out there, smart people, good people, and then not all scammers and all bullshit artists, nut jobs, and you know, they're doing things to improve. Just think about this now. All the cameras we have, we all have our cameras. We still can't get good pictures of UFOs, right? We can't get... But we still are moving forward and trying to analyze things. We are tracking meteorites, and now they're using a drone. And that is amazing to me. So this was like... I, mean, I should maybe should have done this as another podcast, and I'll group it in together as I try to speed through the second one. But this is the link that's in the article for the meteorite. So this just is so interesting to me i get excited I, I you know even when i do some of my movies and tv show podcasts which is the bulk of my shit that i do because you know i don't think i get excited like a little kid until i do science stuff like you know i think one of my best subjects in school was science and um it's always interested me i guess biology and things like that you know learning about things when you're younger, but this just blows my mind. I'm so happy to 
you know, be able to be living in this time. You know, I, I sometimes try to ground myself and just be grateful that I, I, you know, again, I was born in the United States, in New York City. I've known air conditioners, toilets, and showers, and, it, you know, I can just remember, I was at my aunt's the other day, and we were watching TV for a couple of minutes, and it was like Little House on the Prairie was on. You know, cables, but it has fucking everything. And then you can just go back and see. Go further back of what people were dealing, dealing with and living like. So I am grateful I'm in an age where this stuff is possible. And I hope that this infectious, um, you know, love of science is really out there in the, in the, I don't know what do you call it, the zeitgeist of the world. Science is something we can all get together and agree on. Yeah, if you want to say, okay, well, God nudged the media right, whatever, and it's all metaphor, fine, you know what? I don't care. Like, only when they try to do fucking laws like abortion and shit, I get fucking whatever. But anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed this. This is um, really interesting to me. Like I said, I'll put the link for the article in the description. As I said, the article itself has some great links, and you can hit it on that. And you, like, there's an underlying seated life on Earth. And that'll lead you to another article. Splashdown, meteorites landing in a pond's likely originator of life. And there's another article here I can go through and read. I mean, you can get really deep dive, and it's not all clickbait bullshit. Because you can verify some of these things. You can check the abstracts. And, you know, sometimes they're honest about being peer-reviewed, not having the bulk. This is just awesome. I hope everybody enjoys this. Again... It's just a, you know, the way I edit and put these out. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to you all next time.